One of the worst sounds a truck driver can hear is the old girl cranking and cranking and she just won't start. In this video, we'll talk about some cold weather starting tips, some equipment you can buy to help start the truck, and some pros and some cons of those pieces of equipment. Walcott Radio has always been my go-to store for my CB supplies. They're located right across I-80 from the world's biggest truck stop, and Walcott Radio is North America's biggest CB shop. They've got a huge selection. They can give you anything you want. They've got fast shipping, and their staff is all very experienced, over 30 years experience there. I highly recommend Walcott Radio. It's where I shop, and if you type in the code in the box below, Smart Trucking, when you're ordering, you'll get a 10% discount. Essential to successful winter starting are new batteries, new cables, and clean connections. And don't forget to have fresh fuel filters. One of the most reliable methods still is to build a small fire, believe it or not, underneath the truck. And if you heat up the oil pan, and if you heat up the rad, that warms the coolant, that warms the oil, and it'll really assist the truck in firing when it comes time. You've got to give it a little while to warm up, but that's one of the best ways to go about it, always has been. And this works no matter where the truck is parked. That's the biggest advantage of this. In the earlier days, guys would literally build little bonfires underneath the engine. Happily, we progressed to, to these things, which were called sterno cans. Basically, they're used for, for cooking at campfires and stuff like that. It's, it's just uh, flammable gel. You pop off the top, you throw in a match, and you place it underneath the oil pan and underneath the rad, and then tarp the whole thing over. So I've got that can now lit and the other can underneath the rad. And they'll burn there and, and warm up everything. You've got to stick around and keep an eye on it just to make sure that nothing goes wrong or the oil doesn't light on fire. But we'll cover it up, throw a tarp over it and keep an eye on it. So we've got the whole thing tarped up to help hold in the heat, close the hood, help it even more, let her bake for an hour, and then we'll turn the key and fire the grill up. When it comes time to put the fire out and start the truck, all you need to do is put the lid back on the can, make sure you're wearing gloves because the, can, the cans heat up, they get pretty hot. This is a tried and true method, it works anywhere, and it's never failed. Another way to start the truck, and this is a tried and true method as well, and I've even had cat mechanics use this, so I know it's okay. You've just got to be careful, is to loosen the air to air clamp, the intake clamp, sp spread the air intake open, and give it a shot of ether, and then start the truck. Now really to work well, you need two people to do this. You need one to squirt the can, and one to start the truck, and you don't want to give it too much ether. The moment the truck starts to fire, you gotta quit spraying. Too much ether will damage the motor. So I pulled the hose back so the ether can hit the air system and as I spray, someone else should be inside cranking over the motor.
Don't forget after this process and the truck is running to make sure you reinstall the hose clamp. Now there are some pieces of equipment you can buy to make your life a whole lot simpler and not have to go through this stuff. The, the first thing is uh, like an engine fired, diesel fired heater for your motor, like a Wabasto for instance. And what it does is fire off the battery electrically, run off the fuel in the tank and circulate the coolant in the motor until it's warm enough to help start the truck. And those work pretty well as long as you've got a really good set of batteries and you don't leave it too long. The problem is they drain the batteries. So if you're not paying attention, you can have a nice warm engine and then not enough battery juice to turn it over to crank it to make it start. They're expensive and they need a lot of maintenance. They're expensive to maintain. You gotta change the nozzles, nozzles annually. And with this new type of diesel fuel that we have now, they, they run into issues. Something else you can use is a generator. Buy a portable generator. And you can, you can either mount it to the truck or not, plop it on the back deck, fire up the generator, and plug in the engine block that way and let the generator run for a while. Or you can mount it right on the truck and have it wired in internally to do something like that. You can even have the coolant lines from the engine routed through some generators so they automatically warm up the coolant. The problem with these things is they're very expensive to buy, north of $10,000, and they're, they're not really that reliable. They break down a lot. They cost a lot of money to maintain and keep. I've never known anyone that kept a generator more than a couple years because they didn't have issues with it and they added about 500 pounds of weight to the truck. So that's a problem with the generators. Also, you can get what's called an APU. And probably the best one is from Thermaking and they're called a tri-pack. And you can get those optionally so coolant lines run through the tri-pack as well. Again, very expensive. And then on top of that, expensive to install. And something I didn't like about the Thermoking systems is that they required, you could use them for in-cab heating as well, but they required a fan-mounted box drilled through the back of the bunk. And I never liked the look of that. And still after all these years, probably the best and most reliable way to make sure your truck's going to start is plug it into an electrical outlet, get a good heavy cord, keep an eye on it. And you don't need to run it all day and all night because that sucks up a lot of electricity, runs up the bill at your house or wherever. You only need to plug it in a couple hours before you go to start the truck. Make sure you unplug it prior to cranking the engine. And something else I always buy are these little plugs that insert in the back of the, the wiring just they'll light up to make sure your current is flowing through to the truck. One trick that really works well is to swap out your old fuel filter, put on a fresh filter, fill it full of warm diesel that you've kept inside or heated, fill the fuel filter, screw it on, and then crank it over. Let that warm fuel go into the motor. One trick I've learned over the years is that the old girl likes to be talked to before you cold start it. You've got to kind of get her in the mood. Okay, girl, we've got to go to work today. I know you've been sitting out here unplugged, but I'm counting on you. We need you to fire up. Come on, baby, don't let me down. You push in the clutch, you put your foot on the fuel, and you go, come on, baby, we got to go. Come on, baby, let's do it. Come on. Back in the 1930s, when Kathy's grandfather was trucking, he was hauling logs out of the bush. And what they used to do every night, they'd all stay in a logging camp and they drain their coolant or their oil into buckets and take it in and set it by the fire all night. In the morning then, they take the warm coolant or the oil or the water, put it back in the trucks so it helped warm the engine and then the trucks would start. Happily, we've progressed a little bit since those days, but I thought that was an interesting story from back in the past. Years ago, I was hauling fuel up into Northern Ontario in this old beater freight liner, an old cab over. The thing quit on me, loaded with fuel, 
the side of the road, I got it to the side of the road and she just shut off. And it was cold outside. So I managed to trek to the nearest farmhouse, use their phone to call the carrier and say, you know, I'm broken down, here's where I am, come and get me. But I knew I was in the middle of nowhere and I knew I had to guard the trailer. So I went back to the truck, which was a good hike through the snow, got into the truck, of course no motor, no heat. And by the time they got to me, I was wrapped up in the curtains from the bunk, shivering to death, just trying to keep warm. And it was hours before they found me again. And that's when I learned right then and there not to run junk equipment in cold weather because it could cost you your life. I always prep my truck and that's why I do it. Stay safe, keep the rubber side down, and we'll see you on the backhaul.